Okay, I'd like to welcome everybody to the six o'clock, a little running a little late, um, workshop of the Ta Scarborough Town Council. Uh, We're uh, discussing the animal control ordinance, and I would ask everybody in the audience to uh, please be quiet. This is a discussion between um, counselors, um, and you are welcome at the seven o'clock portion during the uh, public comment section to. Um, uh, mention anything you would like on the issues that we discussed tonight. And I think I'll, at this point, I'll turn it over to Town Manager Tom Hall. Okay. And also, uh, Councilor Donovan will be also helping in the presentation. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as the Council will recall, and those in the, in the public here, uh, the Council met for an hour uh, discussing the committee report last meeting. There was really no clear consensus that came from that, and you agreed to meet again, and here we are. Uh, further, last meeting I put together a short list, those recommendations that, uh, in my opinion, required or contemplated an, uh, an ordinance amendment of some sort. Uh, I've gone further and prepared a separate list uh, that now includes all of the committee recommendations, and I think it's really important for a couple of reasons to make sure the council spends a few moments and talks about and I ideally gives uh, some policy direction to me uh, regarding the totality of the committee <coughs> recommendations, which there are 23. Uh, the, the council understandably kind of immediately gravitated to the most controversial one, and that kind of dominated your hour. So uh, with your permission, I'd like to help walk you through that process, and um, let me do that. So I, forgive me, for those in the audience, it may not be terribly easy to see. Uh, not at all at this point. <laughs> not at all. Isn't technology great? Essentially, uh, this isn't essential for the presentation. The committee report itself uh, contained all the recommendations, and what I'm trying to pull up here is a simple PDF file that lists them, and it was just going to serve as a guide uh, for me and for those uh, those at home. Not sure why I'm not getting any. There we go. Okay. Again. Forgive me for it not being uh, a terribly slick presentation, but I think it will serve the purpose for us tonight. So let's start right at the top. And if it is okay for the council, again, these are the recommendations not requiring ordinance amendments. And I'd, uh, I'll read them just to introduce them. Uh, and then uh, it would be great to have the, the council discuss them. Uh, obviously, you're not going to make any decisions tonight, but some sort of consensus or uh, nod to me as to whether this makes sense or not would be uh, incredibly helpful. So the first uh, recommendation was to establish an ongoing committee to help implement a number of the recommendations from the committee. And a couple of thoughts in that regard was to make sure that there's broad representation, both geographically and interest-wise, uh, beach areas as well as uh, it's kind of uh, you know, town-wide. Uh, a couple of the areas recommended that they could spend more time talking about is uh, preparation of the educational materials, uh, the whole monitoring program and coordination of volunteers, which we expect will be uh, a fair amount of work, at least initially. Establishing consistent signage town-wide, potentially consider dog parks, and then work with the uh, piping plumber coordinator and agency partners uh, in kind of all related matters. So those are just some suggestions that the committee throws your way. So uh, I turn it back to you to have some discussion around that notion. And it, you know, we lead with this, and you'll note um, there's suggested action on some of the recommendations to follow that, in fact, those future recommendations get kicked to this committee because they, they require a little longer range uh, discussion before implementation. So, Mr. Chairman? Okay. <clears throat> discussion. Who wants to start first? Just to tell you that the committee at times found the scope of its work overwhelming and and it seemed as if to do a respectful job 
to many of the subjects that an ongoing committee uh, would be very helpful to the plumber coordinator, to community services, uh, and that they could perform a really important function. And that's really how uh, this proposal came about, was the recognition that there is a lot of work to do to do this job well. And so it was felt that uh, a committee dedicated to this, and it doesn't have to last forever. We didn't really decide on uh, those aspects or have a recommendation on those aspects, but uh, to create one seemed to make sense. Okay, well, um, let's, let's look at the, the first item. Um, in, in the, the items that are presented, is there any discussion or um, does anybody have any reason why that should not move forward? The whole thing or the first no, item? No, the first item. We're going to go item by item. I'm in favor of it. Understand they would be advisory, so council would yeah. take you know, re recommendations back, and you'd you know to the consensus either to move this forward or change it. I meant that um, when it comes before the council, um, if someone changes their mind, there always can be amendments to uh, delete from that. So this is only a discussion as to whether we move this forward or not. Uh, to me, generally speaking, um, I can see going forward with a committee, perhaps if it's tasked with specific items such as what's up there, I would hate to have a committee that attempts to relitigate what we're hopefully going to get done in the near future. Um, so I, you know, I can see it focused on educational materials, where do we go from here, maybe even broaden it to be not just dogs, but animal control in general, I don't know. But that, that's how I could see this going forward. Well, okay, let me get what I'm saying for an example. Um, what I would uh, consider on this uh, a deletion of would be um, <clears throat> I'd, I'd rather not consider dog parks I at agree. this time. Um, I don't think that <coughs> we, uh, the budget constraints uh, at this time, I don't believe uh, can warrant spending money on a, on a dog park. So if I, I say that's the, you know, um, consensus, I meant why, you know, spend time on um, discussing it? Bill? The committee didn't endorse uh, the pursuit of dog parks as a solution. I think the committee's discussion, uh, I'm not sure that we actually took a specific vote, but certainly people spoke in favor of seeing how effective all of our parks, which have off-leash privileges uh, under voice control, we have the Scarborough Land Trust, we have hundreds and hundreds of acres. So the, the, all of that was brought to, to mind mm -hmm. to, to indicate that this wouldn't be something that was going to be pushed. C correct. I just don't want, <clears throat> when people see dog parks up there, I don't want them to get the idea that we're going to spend money on do a dog park. So. Um, there's, you know, a better way of saying it, that the town already owns uh, open areas where mm -hmm. dogs are free to go off leash. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's it, how I would explain it. I think in the final analysis, as is, is I understand it, uh, the real need for dog parks, because there's so much off leash, leash time mm -hmm. presumably being afforded, is really as an amenity. That separate and apart from this discussion, there are folks that would very much like this kind of facility with maybe agility training. Um, so. Uh, if, it, if it behooves the uh, council, I can create a fairly simple order that would create the committee and these sorts of substantive uh, comments can be made at that point. Mm -hmm. Right. Good. Okay? Yeah. All right. I didn't do it that. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna All right. Any objections? Uh, Jessica? I just would make the suggestion that it is an ad hoc committee to yeah, me right. um, with a sunset to it. I mean. I don't think an, an ongoing committee, standing committee, needs to be formed to address some of those items. Um, and I could live with or without the committee. I mean, I look at the list and say some of this could very easily be done in-house with staff, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we all agree that we want education materials and consistent signage, well, that's more of a staff. You know, you direct the public works to make signs. You 
you have maybe the clerk's office pull together the materials. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it doesn't make or break it for me, but my only suggestion is it, that it be ad hoc. Fair point. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. I'll make sure I prepare it with that in mind. Good. Sounds That's fine. Right. Everybody in agreement with that? Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right, number two, designate Co-op Beach as a year-round dog beach. Uh, this would involve the exploration uh, of the process to delist that area from uh, the essential habitat designation, which it currently has, uh, and also consult with some of the various existing committees, Shellfish and Coastal Waters and Harbor Committee, that have related uh, responsibilities and solicit their input. Um, so that's it. And this is one of the matters because it is longer range that we suggest uh, the long range or this ongoing committee could take up because it will take some time to kind of sort through. Okay. Um, when you say a year round dog beach, not affected by times or anything? That was the notion. That was the discussion from essentially the boat ramp, boat launch facilities to the physical end of the beach. There's a rock Off jetty. Beach is fine at that beach. Yes. All the time. And that was based on the fact that there's no historical nesting uh, data um, at that location. Okay. Um, I, thought, I thought it was suitable for a committee because a lot more research needed to be done to determine whether or not this was a viable idea. People had to be checked with, uh, and, and we hadn't, we just didn't have the ability to do that. Uh, so I thought, it, I think it's a good idea, uh, but it needs some research. Okay, so then that would have to go back to a, a committee in that hoc committee. Okay, very good. General agreement? Did you have something, Jessica? I would just, again, I don't have any heartburn with it going, you know, being looked at through a committee. Um, I just, for what it's worth, I'd be more interested to hear what the Selfish Commission and Coastal Waters has to do because realistically our co-op is our working waterfront. This is where the boats are. This is where they're offloading and trying to work down there. Um, I don't know what kind of an impact that's going to have to that. I mean, it's food and food handling. Do you, do you have dogs running up, peeing on clam crates? I mean, I don't. I, I really prefer to hear what's coming out of Shellfish Commission for what their input would be. And I think that's what a, if we gave it to the committee, we would ask them to do that. You know what? Nothing. Oh, good. Okay. Um, sounds like that one will move on. Okay. The uh, pipe and clubber coordinator position, we've had one through our beach management agreement, but this would really formalize the position uh, by funding it and cooperating with other private beach owners, uh, perhaps to help share in those responsibilities. It's really a staff, uh, excuse me, a budget consideration that will be part of my proposed budget. But I'm just interested in your reaction uh, about that general notion. Anybody? I think that we we basically have to have one, or we should have one. Somebody's got to be on top of, on a daily event, mm -hmm. what's going on at all the beaches. Oh, I'd be in favor of that. I have a question. Yeah. Um, I, I guess I do remember a blip about this before, that we have somebody in-house already tasked for this. Um, and I remember something with the price tag to make it more of a true focus for that person's position, but um, what was the price tag and are you talking a different person for that position or just dedicating more of that staff member's time? I, I, I'm envisioning a new person that would be dedicated to this. It would be a part-time position uh, in conversation with the service. They've been, they estimated 20 hours a week and so that's what we're kind of working with from a budget point of view. Is that year-round? Yeah, that was my question. No, it would be five, five months five or so. Months. Five months. Um, the, the kind of time frame we've talked about, uh, um, April 1st through mid-September, late September. Do you marry anything? No. no. Okay, Bill? Okay, that one seems okay. to be a no-brainer. We'll move that one along. Uh, improved signage, all beach access points. Uh, this is clearly something the staff can take and run with. Uh, it might also be something the committee can talk about. There are a number of, you know, there, there are major beach, beach access points, but there's a lot of other minor ones uh, and private ones. 
Okay. Um, Definitely. That's a no-brainer. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I know some of these are going to be, but i uh, just looking for, you know, if you guys have any comments to add to that. So, so we move that one along. Yeah. Another no-brainer, I suspect, enhanced focus on education and enforcement. This yeah. kind of should ride over the entire body of recommendations. Uh, again, staff can do a lot to advance this stuff right away, uh, and then the committee could help refine that over time. Yep. Probably a no-brain. Mm -hmm. Anybody? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. that one's moving along. Yeah. Uh, formulate educational materials in coordination with other agencies regarding the issue of keeping cats indoors. This is not a any kind of mandatory or ordinance that would uh, promote that or require that. More some outreach to, for instance, uh, homeowners, uh, beachfront homeowners, to remind <coughs> them of that and and look for voluntary compliance. Anything? Moving along? Yep. yep. Okay. That one. All right. We're cooking now. Educate, uh, or excuse me, engage uh, golf courses in town regarding their use of weed and pest control management products. This, again, would be an outreach effort, not uh, anything by way of mandate or regulation. Uh, we do have an existing pest management advisory committee, which uh, certainly could serve a role in that, re that outreach effort. Do they already do that at all? I mean, I'm just out of curiosity. I live across the street from a golf course, so I'm wondering if that happens. I don't believe we've made any uh, specific outreach efforts, no. That would be a good thing to do, I would think. Okay. Uh, it was, it's just um, would be educational. It wouldn't be anything right. that we're forcing upon uh, golf courses. It would be um, asking them if they would cooperate. And I do think it belongs under pest management myself. I, th I thought it would be beneficial to the pest management advisory committee to actually learn from the golf courses because the golf courses right. are at really at the leading edge. They're, they're working on right. how to go to a more organic or less herbicide, pesticide environment. Right. Uh, so uh, uh, I thought it would be a useful exchange, which is, I think, the level at which we were talking. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any opposition to that or move that one along too? Okay. Okay. Uh, next is petition for the inclusion of the areas north and east of Scarborough Beach uh, to include that in the essential habitat designation. Right now, the designation essentially um, is the area of Scarborough Beach, uh, and there's areas north, uh, <coughs> north and east of that that. Uh, for whatever reason, are not currently included. So this would require some outreach to the state and involvement with the state to um, have that happen. And for that matter, we suggest that uh, perhaps the committee could work on that. Who, who makes that determination? I believe IF and W does. Uh, that's my understanding. But uh, admittedly, I need to do a lot more work in terms of process and understand how that works. So that's nothing more than a telephone call, right, to them? I would like to think it's that easy. I'm not sure of that. That's <laughs> probably not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it, it needed more research than the committee had the uh, time or ability to do, which is really why I think it ended up as uh, you know being passed to uh, either staff or this ongoing committee to look at it closer uh, to determine whether or not this was an oversight on the part of IF&W or whether it was, there's other reasons why it's not on the uh, essential habitat maps. We didn't know the answer. Well, are we making any attempt to put an ordinance out to control those areas? No, I, I, I mean, if, if this was an oversight, we're merely bringing it to their attention and letting them deal with it because it, the essential habitat mapping is done by IFW, and that's there's a statutory legislative process that that goes through. It doesn't have anything to do with the towns uh, regulating those areas. Why don't we leave it alone, Bill? Uh, yeah. Jim asked, "Why? Why wouldn't we just leave it alone?" I mean, that it, um, anybody could call IFW and tell them what's the story with that and raise the question. 
doesn't have to be the town of Scarborough. I think the reason the committee took it up is it was just awkwardly absent, and, and no one could quite understand why. Really? And in the spirit of protection of plovers, uh, you know, those other areas of that same beach are, in all respects, as much like <coughs> Scarborough Beach as, as anything. So, um, if anything, is to seek out answers. So, is it petition for the inclusion of, or is it inquire to? I guess that maybe makes your point a little question a little better. Um, why would we ask them to do that instead of just asking them why haven't you done it? I understand. That's that's a, that's certainly the 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 best way to begin the conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So more of an inquiry than an advocacy for inclusion. So we don't know enough to know whether we should be or should not be advocating. So we don't know the facts and circumstances around those uh, beach areas. The committee just didn't receive that information. Well, I <clears throat> we're moving that one forward. It looks like everybody's in agreement with that. Okay. Next. Next is on fireworks. It's really just to staff uh, the police department, in particular, heightened enforcement uh, on the beach during what we know is the high fireworks times, July 3rd, 4th, and 5th, uh, and then to coordinate with other agencies to discourage the use of fireworks around documented nest locations, which there's good data on, mm -hmm. uh, and further emphasize uh, that fireworks are banned on beaches in all of our materials. That's really just an educational piece. I, I had one one question on that. If, if the state... Um, says that you're, you're not allowed to use fireworks on the beach, and the town owns does, um, yet how does that affect the homeowners along the beach? Are they compelled not to use fireworks, or we can't control that? Right now, water beachfront property owners are allowed to use consumer fireworks for those five days a year on their property, and that may be problematic um, near known be uh, nest locations. That's, so that's what I've, I'm, you know, asking that question. So that's, that's something that the committee's going to have to work on also, then I take it. Perhaps, but I think the, the police department, we can do a better job of more strategic, uh, uh, specific enforcement around those predictable days where there's heightened activity of fireworks. Well, that's kind of a no-brainer, right? Mm -hmm. Now we'll move along? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, evaluate trash collection procedures with the hope of reducing the total number of receptacles that we have on Pine Point Beach uh, and further um, that they be moved further away or as far away as practicable from ne known nest locations. Uh, this speaks to the issue of predation and trash receptacles being an attractant for predators mm -hmm. and the plovers being caught in the middle. Uh, these are, you know, it's, it's something within our control uh, through community services. That one's kind of no brainer. Yeah. I mean, yeah. people who can lug their trash a little further. They lugged it in. They can lug it out. Well, frankly, we were. I was astounded. We have over 50 receptacles on Pine Point Beach alone. How many? 50. 50. Yeah. So we'll look to minimize the the number of that. Is that because of the co-op? Well, we try to have them at every path to the beach to make sure we catch people, um, make it as convenient as possible. Uh, we may be able to, to consolidate those some. That one's good. We'll move okay. that one along. Next, uh, seek input from state and federal agencies regarding suggested best practices for beach raking. Um, in modern history, we rake the beach once a week, every Friday morning, and uh, we have established protocols we've negotiated with IFNW and the federal uh, service uh, around that activity. Uh, but we probably could always do better, and this is just to make sure we understand and perhaps change our practices to do um, the best we can. This is something we'll do um, within the month, so we're ready as soon as the se season starts. The town has a good uh, uh, beach raking ordinance. It's a 250-foot setback from the uh, exclosure uh, covering a nest, so we do a good job of, of not raking in those areas. Uh, and as a practice at Higgins, they don't do much beyond Morning Street from Houghton to Morning. So 
and given that all of the plover activity as far as nesting and where they start out is the other end of the beach, there's no impairment there. But the committee thought that looking to understand better what best practices are would be an appropriate thing for an ongoing committee to, to look into. Mm -hmm. That's another no-brainer. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the next uh, few, and there's only three left, uh, recommendations in this category deal with town-wide issues, and this first one deals with kind of all town facilities, non-beach. And essentially the committee is uh, recommending or observing that the current rules in that regard are appropriate, that allow off-leash under voice control. Uh, they're, looking, they're suggesting better signage at all facilities uh, to publicize those current rules and responsibilities of dog owners. And we can certainly do that through staff and community services. Um, a further thought in this regard is uh, perhaps consideration of dog parks at one or more town locations, considering such factors as location, cost, and amenities. I, I know personally I, I would like to see more emphasis on voice control. You hear a lot about off-leash, 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 and off-leash means one thing to a lot of people. Voice control is something totally different to many people, so um, that's, I would just like to see more emphasis on voice control and what that means. Emphasis in the signage or? Yeah, in, in any education or okay. whatever that goes out. I think uh, what you're probably referring to is a better definition of what's perhaps, expected for perhaps. voice control. Yeah, but at least making sure that people who are bringing their dogs to the beach, particularly people who don't live in Scarborough, and there are a lot of those. You know, they they see off leash, and I see him. I saw him the other day. You know, just come down to the beach, take the leash off the dog, and the dog's gone. You know, half a mile down the beach. Mm -hmm. um, even in so-called off season, I mean, we do have a voice control rule in town. It's part of the ordinances, and I think we need to educate people more about what that is, what that means. I think you're talking a little bit about just the language we use, because right. when we refer to off leash, right. we all think of off leash under voice control. Uh, and so it's a does. bit of shortcut, but uh, people, when we are crafting brochures, informational inf uh, uh, materials, signage, we need to make sure that that off-leash uh, reference doesn't stand alone, that yeah. uh, voice control is yeah. constantly referenced. Yeah. Right, so I it think will all be from an educational base. Right. It's, I think it's a good point she's made. Yep. All right. Any Okay. Everybody okay with that one? Yep. All right. Uh, next, um, encourage both the Scarborough Conservation Land Trust and the Eastern Trail Management District to maintain current practices related to dog access, and the town should do what it can to help support them in this endeavor. Um, this is something the staff can certainly reach out uh, and do. Uh, it may take shape of. Uh, Helping supply dog bags, uh, you know, to make sure that uh, it's it's done uh, conveniently and properly at these locations to make sure that privilege remains. Nice. Anything? I guess move on. Okay. Right. And the last one: require distribution of educational materials at the time of annual licensure re renewal, and this would require an affirmation of the dog owner of receipt of those materials. Um, and then there was some notion of a permit system for temporary <coughs> use. Admittedly, these things need, I think, a little more time to, yeah. mm -hmm. to materialize and gel, uh, but th that concept was important enough for the committee to make a recommendation in that regard. And I think a real essence of this is to, re is to require that uh, distribution of materials and affirmation at the time of annual licensure. Uh, that's the time when we are able to be physically face-to-face -face with the dog owner. <coughs> yeah. yeah, that sounds fine. Okay, so that completes uh, the set of recommendations that, uh, in my estimation, don't require any ordinance amendment. Um, many of them refer back to this ongoing committee, and so the, in terms of this batch of recommendations, what I envision coming back to you would be the order establishing this committee and included under the duties and responsibilities would be a number of the recommendations that we've just talked about. Um, and I expect there will be some discussion around all of those issues. 
So the next batch is where we started last meeting and, and got tripped up a bit. Uh, this first one is really the meat of it. And I might suggest that we leapfrog over this and move right to the off-season beach regulation. <laughs> Does that sound appropriate? And, and that we can come back and end the evening hopefully working through uh, the really substance of this. So this first one is, uh, is, is that permissible? Mm -hmm. like oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so the first one is off-season beach reg regulations. And that is defined between uh, the day after Labor Day <coughs> and March 31 each year. And that dogs be allowed on beach dawn to dusk, but must be leashed between uh, 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. daily. And this was really uh, speaking directly to what we heard from some residents that uh, they'd like to have some time on the beach year-round without dogs um, off-leash. Discussion on that? Uh, I'm in favor of that. I'm fine with that. Yeah. <clears throat> need a, does anybody need a few minutes on that one? Or? Uh, no, I think it's a it's a good a good uh, uh, adjustment to take account of people who would like to be able to uh, use the beach off season in the middle of the day for a few hours with dogs on leash rather than off leash. Okay. Uh, is there a consensus? Move along? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Next is to include the reference of site in the voice control definition. So it would be site and voice control. Um, sounds simple enough, but I think, um, it, I think it, it, it would be a, a real improvement to that definition. I'm definitely in favor of that. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. is, is anybody thinking of additions to that or? Well, I don't see it in here, and I don't know that this is really the spot, but um, something I had talked about before at the last meeting is the inclusion of an, um, a cutoff point for at-large when, when a dog is so far away that they become at-large at that point um, to try to prohibit, you know, the problem that comes up, which is, yeah, they, they come, you know, folks especially that aren't familiar with our rules they come to the beach far. and then the dogs half a mile down. So, um, I, I, like I said before, I'm not necessarily married to a specific number, um, but, but certainly there ought to be something that defines, you know, if it's 100 feet away or 100 yards, wh whatever the number is, but your dog shouldn't be more than X, Y away from you. Well, that kind of goes hand in hand with uh, voice control itself. You know? right. it's, not, it's not or, it's and, voice and sight control. Right. It's not or. Right. That helps. Well, I mean, you can still see it half a mile away. <laughs> Doesn't can, mean it can, can, it. can it hear you at the same time. I, I think Jessica's point is independent of the sight aspect yeah. because yeah. you get a dog enthusiastic. He's at the beach, and he all of a sudden he's on the beach, and uh, uh, and away from his owner, and his owner's trying to do all the other things that you do when you alight from a vehicle. And so that that can create a real problem. That is a obvious example of sight control should be exercised. Uh, uh, Jessica, you're really talking about, you know, sometimes dogs are 50, 100 feet away, and uh, and it isn't it isn't the context of fetch because obviously on the beach, uh, dogs are sometimes 50 yards away from c catching a tennis ball. I don't think we're intending to try to regulate or legislate that, uh -huh. you, the dog owner uses their best judgment to throw the ball in a direction that isn't going to be disruptive to other people. But Jessica's talking about where the dog is 50 feet away and he is disruptive of other people. Oh, absolutely. And not even just the beach. I mean, how many times have you, you know, I've been up to Fuller Farm or something walking around and same thing. You know, the owner's up on the back corner and the dog's all the way up at the parking lot saying hello to me. So, I mean, so that's, I mean, like I said, I, I'm not married to something and I'm certainly open to other ideas, whether it's, <coughs> I think I, I, something very simple. I don't think it needs to be elaborate. Any dog more than, you know, maybe it's, Maybe it's 100 feet. Uh, any dog more than 100 feet from its owner is considered at large. But is, is that, is that, um, with the voice, okay, I, I, what Bill's saying is sight is being added to voice control. This still could be 
further definitions for voice control. Um, I that, think, it, I that think it, been she's talking about at large, large right, an, an large. amendment to the, so it's a companion right. Right. issue. Mm. Yeah. But I, th I think it wouldn't be inappropriate because a lot of times a police officer would not take any action against a person on the beach yeah. playing fetch. Right. That's the good no. judgment that you pay police officers to use. Right. But if it's the right situation, mm. he likes to have an ordinance that has got some parameters to it. Mm. So 100 feet might be the right number. I don't know what the right number is, but mm. I wouldn't be opposed to seeing us advance this idea into a first reading so that we could see what it would look like and talk about maybe it some more. Maybe even um, if, if it helps to maybe we could get some input from, from the police department if they have maybe an idea of sure. you know, how far away. I, I, there's got to be a magic number, too. And, and, I mean, we had hunting dogs enough growing up. Yeah, they can run out ahead of you, but on the wrong wind, they might not hear you calling back. So maybe that's the number it's tied to. I, I don't know, but mm. maybe, like I said, maybe... PD could give us a little I, I better look, understanding. The, the whole, one of the things the chief brought up when he was speaking to a couple of people here, that um, enabling a police officer that's in a car going by the beach, if the dog's too far away, he can't make a judgment of is it within the parameters of what we're looking at. <clears throat> so I think you're right that we've got to have a magic number, and I think if we talk around and see what people's feelings yeah. are. The at-large concept is, is part of Chapter 604, Animal Control, so I, I think what I hear you saying is providing a little more meat around what what defines a dog at large. Mm -hmm. rather than yes. I'm certainly pleased to look at that and incorporate that as part of a, a host of recommendations. Yeah, um, so basically we're, we're just, it <coughs> just Jeez, speaks to uh, <coughs> add and cite vo voice control. I think we all can agree with that. So let's move that one mm -hmm. along. And when it comes to definitions, um, like Jessica was mentioned, we can yep. discuss that. Right. Um, yeah. Next. Okay. Uh, right now in the uh, chapter 604, there's a two, excuse me, 150 foot setback from protective fencing. This uh, stake and twine and the committee recommends moving that to 200 to be a little more protective. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. That. Next recommendation is establish standards for re what we're calling responsible dog ownership that must be read and acknowledged at the time of licensure. We touched on this briefly before, and uh, but this goes a bit further and actually recommends specific language on this um, what defines responsible dog ownership, and it would be these four standards that someone would have to read and acknowledge to um, before they're issued their annual license. Is the acknowledgement in writing? A That's the intention. Okay. Yep, an affirmation that they've received, read, and agreed to abide by. <coughs> Does it, would you like me to read those just so everyone? Yes, I okay. would, please. And, and the committee suggests uh, defining responsible dog ownership as dogs should never charge, chase, or display aggression toward any person, other dog, wildlife, bird. A dog should never behave in any way that a reasonable person would find disturbing or harassing. A dog should never fail to return to its owner or guardian side immediately upon verbal or visual command. And a dog should never um, uh, essentially oh. have more than two dogs under voice or sight control at yeah. the same time. Mm -hmm. So if you want, I'll jump out of the gates on that one. I may said this at the last meeting, too. I don't approve of the last one for um, for a couple of reasons. But it, it's certainly it's not beach-specific. If the intent is for the beach, then, then maybe I can warm up to it a little bit but it becomes a town-wide ordinance at this point, so that would be inclusionary of, of everything. Um, you certainly have instances where you would have more than two dogs, um, you know, whether that's through the purpose of hunting, which state laws cover that you're, you're not allowed to you know, interfere with animals used with a licensed hunter for the purpose of hunting. So maybe they're retrieving dogs, maybe they're pointers, maybe they're foxhounds, whatever, but through the purpose of that alone, 
Uh, maybe they're duck dogs, you know, whatever. Um, certainly service dogs are the same way, dogs that are in service for service purposes. You know, you can't regulate rate them. Um, you know, like I said, I could warm up to it a little more if, it, if you're worried about having packs of dogs running on the beach. Maybe that, that was kind of the intent of it, but um, I, I don't support the last one. Okay. What if you put something that, ex that specifically excludes dogs used for hunting or while being used for hunting or some worrying along that line? Yeah, I think I did send something once upon a time to the committee that had something about it um, with the exclusion of mm -hmm. dogs for the purpose of yeah, hunting you and, um, you know, but again, I guess, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm not trying to rock a boat too, too much. I'm just saying as it stands, you know, um, it, it needs something somewhere in there I, for me. I think everyone would agree with you, and I think it ought to be written up and advanced with the uh, imposition of qualifications that you just pointed out. Those exclusions being hunting dogs and service dogs? Mm -hmm. Those are the two groups I heard. Mm -hmm. I, I question doing this at all. And the reason why is because this would only pertain to Scarborough owned dogs that are registered in the town of Scarborough. And we have hundreds of dogs coming from other towns in the summertime, states and everything like that, that don't, don't have to go through this process. So what are we really accomplishing? I mean, if we wanted to, somebody to say, hey, I, I won't do this, I won't do that, okay, so you give them a, you know, when they get their license, they sign a sheet of paper, but you know, what does it really mean? What are we going to do with this? Well, to me, it's like anything. It's at least one step or a way to educate a certain portion of the population that's using the beach that we can control at this point. I mean, and it, to me, it's. I, I assume you come in, you get your tag, you're going to have something that you, you read, and then you just sign off on it. I mean, that's my assumption. I could be wrong. Well, I, that's where I think it really belongs. I mean, if we're going to. If we were going to entertain some sort of a tag system, it would seem to me that this is where... Well, I'm talking about their your regular tags that you have to get once a year. License. Dog tags, licenses, yeah. whatever they call them. Admittedly, this, this uh -uh. doesn't address all situations, but the, I don't forget how many dog licenses we issued, 2,300 or something like that. At least we know we're getting that aspect, and that's going to be, I would suggest, uh, the majority of folks uh, that are using town facilities. There is a further recommendation that speaks to the dog tag program that is more global and, and might address out-of-town folks um, and even seasonal for that matter. I mean, if we had a tag program, everybody in the town of Scarborough wanted to walk their dog off leash would have to go through some sort of a certification, what, whatever a tag program might be, right? plus everybody that comes in out of town. Mm -hmm. So you're covering all of that. Yeah, that's I don't right. That's, that's I mean, I think recognition. it's a good I think it's a good proposal because it's a uh, with the exceptions that Jessica pointed out, it uh, it does place a limit on how many so you don't have three dogs off leash. Uh, and that is going to be part of to get uh, off leash rights in Scarborough you're going to be told what the rules are. Yep. So it's both in town and out of town would know about it, and uh, I think it's prudent to have it, <coughs> given the popularity of our beaches, certainly. I, I'll, I'll say I agree partly with Jessica, um, with the, but for me personally, I, I mean, I, you know, I've worked with trainers, I've trained my dogs, my dogs are hunting dogs. And I find it very difficult, af, you know, going over two. If I go, I have four. So if I go from two to three, it becomes, I, I have difficult, uh, maybe I'm not that good, but I have a <laughs> difficult time, um, you know, getting responses out of them when at that point. 
But I'm just saying, may, there may be plenty of people out there that can control um, more than two dogs off leash. I, I can't do it. <laughs> That's the honest truth. <laughs> Given the difficulty with dog. voice control, mm -hmm. generally for one dog, mm -hmm. you get up to three. You, that's tough, which is why I think it's a it's a reasonable restriction, given given the limitations that uh, people have in exercising effective voice control. So it doesn't sound like we have consensus on this one. Um, so um, I don't um, putting. I, I've got I've got no hang up in. And it going forward, I, I yeah. just think it's a duplication of effort. I, yeah. I would say let it go forward and put something in about hunting. Yeah. Hunting dogs. Okay. I can do that. Okay. And service. And service. see how it, it looks in exactly. the context of the ordinance. Yeah. Will that satisfy? Yeah, okay. that, that's, that's okay. fine. Um, like I said, I, I think I even submitted something at one point. It yeah. just said right. yeah, in did. accordance and, with, and you know, state laws. Yeah, I'll we find just don't want to get hung up on that. Let's move along to the next one. The next one is to uh, the last one under animal control ordinances to expand the definition of animal trespass to allow the owner of the property to issue the warning. Right now it's limited to a law enforcement official. And that's really to comply with state law. It's just a clean up piece. I, I right, state law does not expect that you have an issue. It has for a while now. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Moving on to the plover ordinance. Again, it's to align this with uh, the animal control. It's to establish the 200-foot setback mm -hmm. rather than 150, uh, and also uh, address the issues of parasailing and kite surfing in the other uses that currently require a 600-foot <coughs> setback. It's just adding those two uses to that current definition or, or restriction. Well, Bill, just to ask you, what was the setback uh, for parasailing kite surfing before? Uh, this doesn't change the uh, setback. The setback is consistent with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's guidelines, right. so that's fine. This is adding language uh, to more accurately describe some of the recreational uh, surfing, uh, parasailing, kite surfing types of activities that take place on the water. And on the beach, so we're just, we're really just getting our language uh, up to date, so that it's it's appropriate for the what people call the activities that go on. It's really nothing more than that. So it's uh, it's really just uh, more technical than a substantive change. Okay. Anyone? Yeah, that's all. So okay, we'll move okay. that one along. Yeah. Uh, next is uh, the horse <coughs> beach permit ordinance. And it's to align the dates uh, of that ordinance with the dates that we're talking about for other plover protection. Uh, and so that would allow horses on the beach from October 1 to April 1. What is it now, May 1? I believe so. Okay. I'm fine with that. Okay. That one moves along. To okay. And the final one is, uh, and I think this could take shape by way of an ordinance amendment, is to introduce this dog, dog tag concept. Um, We've, the committee looked at a program in Boulder, Colorado that was very well developed that seemed to be of interest uh, that should be explored further. And essentially it would uh, require the issuance of a dog tag associated with education materials and again an affirmation by the dog owner that they've received and understand and agree to abide by them. Um, it also creates a situation that it's a privilege rather than a right and revocation for noncompliance is a concept that would be introduced with that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there was conversation around making it as easy as possible for um, non-residents, seasonal folks, tourists to um, to abide by this program as well. This is likely to take a little more time in fleshing out, frankly. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. And so may maybe the approach this could be something that's deferred to this ongoing committee for further reflection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would meantime, be my recommendation. Yeah. In the meantime, we could advance. Um, the one requiring it for annual licensure, at least we're addressing those Scarborough residents, which should be the majority of folks, not all for sure. Any opposition? Mm -hmm. I need to do this. <coughs> I want to go back to the horse beach permit ordinance. I know I've been here 13 years, and I can tell you a number of Sundays that those horses have been at Pine Point Beach. 
and on the beach. So I think we missed, we have to make sure to include that in the signage. Yeah, it will, it will be. Yep. And they also have a, their own permit process, too. I'm sure right. we can yeah, they have a, hand them. They, they have to get down and get yeah. permits anyhow. The so writer has to wear a tag. Right. Yeah, I understand that, but I'm also saying it's a practical observation. Yep. They have been there during the summer. Right. Mm. Which is not supposed to. I no. didn't even know they weren't supposed no. to be. Historically, not after uh, May 1st. So um, you're right, they shouldn't be there. Okay, back to uh, the dog tag program. Is there any, anybody has any comments on the da dog tag program? Any? I, I definitely think this is something that should be given to that committee to develop further. Yeah, yeah. has great potential. After Chief Moulton addressed the ad hoc committee, it was very clear that he has uh, great limitations on his ability to enforce, and yet we frequently hear that enforcement is a critical element of being more responsible and responsive to the to the public's needs concerning dog control. So this is intended to be an educational and self-executing uh, enforcement program so that people will take it seriously. Well, we've run the table uh, on the recommendations, yep. but for the, the 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 big one, I suppose, uh, and it's captured in this thought. This is the recommendation from the committee. I know there's been a lot of work done by members of council, and I'm aware that there's a compromise proposal that would like to be presented. Uh, Mr. Chairman, do you wish to run over some time to make sure we? At least oh get yeah, that absolutely. Proposal I, want, we'll, I want to finish this up tonight. So, so I'm going to uh, defer to Councillor Donovan. And in presenting that proposal, there are copies here. Some were distributed, and I see some extra copies if you didn't get one, uh, so you can follow along. And I'm not going to have it projected. I'm going to have some uh, maps projected instead. Yeah, let me. Uh, uh, partly, I want to talk to us, but also I want the public to be more aware. <clears throat> At our last session. Uh, I think all of us came away with a sense that we could not we could not achieve a consensus based on the majority recommendation of the ad hoc committee. Uh, and when that happened, uh, I think all of us said, what can we do that will, will be appropriate and responsive to the situation that developed this past year that put us where we are? Uh, the ad hoc committee had, had presented to it uh, by uh, Lucy Lacasse and uh, Glennis Shabbat, a uh, divide the beach kind of protection <coughs> area that would be very protective and restricted for plovers, and an area that would be uh, 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 unprotected in that uh, dogs would be allowed to be off leash. Uh, uh, we started look, uh, looking at it uh, very hard right after the last meeting to see if we could one, uh, really justify it on the science, uh, and two, expand where it had gotten to in the ad hoc committee to be able to find ways to add additional off-leash time throughout the year. Uh, and that was, that was the goal. So uh, uh, we uh, reached a point now where we have a proposal that we have uh, distributed. Uh, and I'd like to be able to go over each of the beaches so that people can actually understand what we're talking about. <clears throat> the protected area, we have Western and Ferry Beach uh, up on the screen, uh, and Western Beach is under a beach management agreement between Prouts Neck Country Club and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to have that beach closed to dogs, banned dogs, it's a sanctuary area, it's a protected area from April 1 to October 1. So that's a condition that is already existing. Uh, it was thus thought that uh, since the rationale for being able to divide the beach was that during plus plover nesting times, they really don't go very far from the, from the nest. Uh, so there isn't as anywhere near the degree of risk as when the chicks come and they just sort of wander around the beach uh, as they may. So it was expected that we could keep Ferry Beach open 
to uh, off-leash uh, 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 times consistent with what has historically been uh, the schedule. And so we haven't really tampered with that much. That's uh, fairly uh, well in place. Um, when the chicks come, uh, and I don't know if we can uh, uh, bring it down to show the rest of uh, Berry Beach. I think I could. A little bit more. Uh, you get, uh, let me see if this, this thing will work. Uh, what we're talking about is Ferry Beach being allowed to have off-leash time throughout this entire area uh, 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 when the chicks, uh, when the, when the uh, plovers are nesting, which is the April and May time frame. Uh, when the chicks come, which is the latter part of May, uh, uh, the concern is that they'll start here and they'll come down into here. Uh, so what we're proposing is once the chicks are on the beach that the uh, off-leash privileges still exist but start at the boat ramp. Uh, and because the boat ramp has boats and cars and uh, uh, activity, there is the expectation that there will be a bit of a separation there, that it's not an appealing area. These uh, uh, birds are driven by food and safety, uh, and so they generally gravitate away from uh, uh, crowded areas. So that during the uh, period when chicks are on the beach, which is about a 40-day period in the June-July time frame uh, before they migrate, then this portion of the beach would still be open to off-leash privileges. So that's, that's how we uh, propose to treat ferry. Let's go to the next, uh, the next beach. Uh, Higgins, as you can see. Uh, Bill, can I ask a question? Yes. Just for the audience, because I think I know what I'm looking at. Those little white dots are uh, where <coughs> nests have been historically? Those are all the nests that have uh, uh, been recorded in the last 14 years. Uh, so, as you can see, Higgins Beach really only has one place where there's nesting. There has never been, uh, to, to our, my knowledge, uh, a nest in this area. And that's all seawall along there, uh, virtually the entire uh, way, and they do not do well with seawalls uh, because it washes away the nests uh, whenever you have a high tide. So the idea is to have a protection line at Champion Street right here. Uh, uh, that would exist uh, for the nesting season and then uh, if uh, uh, chicks are hatched off Higgins Beach, uh, then uh, they would still be allowed to have this, peer, this space, about half of Higgins Beach, off leash until the plover chicks or their mom and pa plover pass this line. Once they pass it, then what we have is we have wandering chicks, and that's really what was the circumstance that led to the chick being killed on uh, Pine Point Beach last year. Uh, why don't we go to the next slide? It had been suggested that uh, uh, maybe Kent Street, which is the other end of Shipwreck, be used as the dividing line between the protected area for the plovers and the unprotected area where dogs could be off leash. What uh, you can see is this circle, when the, the uh, plovers are nesting, this is the area they go to to feed. So that by using Kent Street, what you would have is dogs off leash right in the area where they're feeding. So. Uh, uh, Champion is really the minimum because it actually comes pretty close, uh, but uh, we're going to have uh, a good monitoring program, I think, to assure uh, safety for, for the chicks. Uh, let's keep going to the next one. The uh, toughest one to deal with was uh, Pine Point Beach because Pine Point has a huge neighborhood, Billsbury Shores here, many, many points of access to the beach. And so what we 
uh, did was we accepted the limitations of the geography. This is the end of the beach that would be the protected area, but it would be an on-leash protected area as opposed to a no-dog protected area. And that's just out of respect for the literally hundreds of homes that are at that end uh, uh, of the beach. So uh, uh, again, the uh, line would be drawn at Heard Park, uh, and if when chicks are born in the protected area, they start to wander beyond Heard Park, then that uh, uh, then uh, uh, we would have we the line moves uh, once the uh, uh, chicks arrive down to Snowberry Park, uh, and so dogs would still be allowed to be <coughs> off leash from this point to the Old Orchard Beach line throughout the entire plover season. Uh, uh, that really is the intention is to create a buffer space between here, which is the protected area, uh, and, uh, and here, so that if they start to wander down, they've got a long way to go before they start to get actually uh, into a difficult space. For those who are interested in knowing what happened last July, based on my discussions with Maine Audubon, that was the nest from which the uh, chick that was killed came from. And they tracked that chick uh, for two weeks. They knew that chick was right there. And then all of a sudden, the chick was gone. And several days passed. They didn't know where that chick was. Uh, and then all of a sudden, the chick was down here, three quarters of a mile away. Uh, uh, and, that, and, and after a few days, that's when the incident occurred. Uh, what that tells you is, a good monitoring program, which is what we're really proposing here, can avoid that kind of circumstance. If the chicks, we know on a daily basis where they are, and we certify that to the plover monitor, the plover, plover coordinator has that certified to, to uh, him or her by a monitor, then if they can't find the chicks, temporarily the beach can be closed till we find the chicks. Now they could have left, and Maine Audubon will tell us that after you know a few days or a week. But at least we'll avoid the situation that was uh, last year where we didn't know where the chick was uh, and after a couple of days an unfortunate incident occurred. And I think we can, we can avoid that, reduce the town's liability, uh, and minimize the uh, restriction on dogs off leash. So I think that uh, uh, that pretty much covers uh, length of leash. Uh, the length, the length of leash. Uh, uh, it was pressed upon us before my time, but but I have been told pressed upon us for an eight foot leash. It, eight feet is not in the guidelines, but it's considered by IFW and U.S. Fish and Wildlife as a good practice. Uh, uh, they don't sell eight foot leashes. That's what came out of the discussion. Uh, both Margot Hodgkins and uh, uh, Lucy Lacasse, very very good. Uh, 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 dogs, people have great reputations on their respective beaches, uh, Pine Point uh, by the enforcement people, uh, and uh, they say eight foot leashes don't exist. So uh, providing a little greater degree of flexibility, I went down to pet quarters, they sell 12 foot uh, leads. I didn't know what the difference between a lead and a leash was, now I do, uh, but it isn't much. Uh, so uh, uh, we considered uh, providing a little flexibility there would be appropriate and provide a, a, a length that actually is on the market. Okay, thank you, Bill. Um, well, we'll move on to Councillor um, comments on this proposal and we'll go from there. Who wants to be first? I'll go. Ed? Um, I think it's a good proposal. Uh, it's going to require the first year anyway it's going to require a lot of adjustment by a lot of people um, by the town by the monitors it's not going to be an easy process um, but I think once you go through a season with like uh, with this and you gain the expertise of what happens during that season, um, 
it would be absolutely wonderful if we could meet this time next year and say that the nests increased on Scarborough beaches by 20% or 30%. That would be wonderful, and yet still provide unleashed time for our dogs. Um, I think it's worth a shot. Um, I know, Jessica, <laughs> you like a cut and dry. <coughs> this isn't cut and dry. <laughs> this yeah. is not cut and dry. Um, but I think it's a good proposal, and I think we should uh, seriously consider this. Jim? <coughs> I agree with Ed. Um, I think a lot of time has gone into this, and I myself see a lot of changes from day one to now. Um, I think it's pretty cut and dried as far as what the rules are. One of the things I didn't like prior to this was the way that the folder was written, because I know from handing them out, people were looking at them and they were either six or eight pages by flipping the pamphlet. Um, I think that's got to be cut down so long as it can still be explicit. Um, <coughs> but I think this should satisfy uh, the people with dogs with off-leash time, uh, and they don't have to vary their schedule a whole lot. And I think it's a, a reasonable and fair compromise um, than what we unfortunately did the first time. And... Uh, that's that. I, I think it represents everybody in a fair and reasonable fashion for as much as we can because you're not going to satisfy 100% of the people on any particular side of this issue. And I think this will come as close as we're going to. So I'd be in favor of this, the way it stands. Jessica. Do you really want to hear from me, Richard? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I think it definitely comes miles uh, from where we were. Um, do I love it? Of course not, but that, that's the art of compromise. You find what you can live with. So what happens here is certainly uh, much closer to, I think, resolving <clears throat> some issues for everybody. It maintains some space on each beach. As a worst case scenario, if the nice little birds decide to wander down the beach, it's a one month worst case scenario time where we can't have them running loose on the beach. Um, so the, the plover stays protected. We maintain most of our beach hours. Hopefully the little buggers will stay in their little green area and we won't have to do anything with the rest of the beach. Um, but, but certainly, like I said, <coughs> I love it. No, can I live with it? Yes. So. Um, so that's it for me. I would right. echo what Jessica is saying. Um, it's not 100% of what I would want either, but again, you know, that is the nature of compromise. Um, my, from day one, what I've, I've wanted to do was balance protecting the town against any lit possibilities of litigation or whatever, spending money on fines with U.S. Fish and Wildlife, uh, and they are the 800-pound gorilla in the room. Mm -hmm. I mean, who knows what will happen. At least we're making an effort, uh, a bona fide effort, to both protect the birds and then allow dog owners the use of the beach, uh, as well as people who don't really care to have dogs around it. There's some of that element in here also, which I think is good. Uh, I agree with Ed. It's going to take some time for people to get used to it. Um, and we are, we'll all be following it um, and seeing how it works. It can always be tweaked if need be, um, but I, I'm in favor of uh, this, and I appreciate all the hard work by uh, both Richard and Bill and, and uh, hammering this out. It's a lot of work. Well, um, the, you know, looking, looking back and looking at emails that were sent concerns of people, suggestions from dog owners, um, and public comment session notes that I have taken. 
Um, I see a lot of things we've progressed greatly. And um, when I get right down to the uh, ad hoc committee suggestions, um, it wasn't quite there yet uh, as far as a compromise. Um, going back and forth, um, you try to get the best compromise you can for everybody. Uh, like, you know, um, dogs having time on the beaches year round to run off leash. Uh, then you have uh, people that want to use the beach and not be harassed by dogs. We covered that. We went from an eight foot leash to a 12 foot mm -hmm. leash. Um, there's, there's many, many other um, things that this proposal is significantly different from last year and from what the ad hoc committee uh, presented. So if, you know, people don't see this as a compromise, um, I don't know how else it can be done. And I'll end my comments there. Bill? You, you know, the, the goal all along uh, uh, since and I've been working on the uh, this divide the beach a protected area for months been thinking about it and noodling it and talking with people and the thing I like about it uh, is it provides some real space to protect plovers during the nesting season that April May period when they're either going to do nests and have chicks or not uh, and I think that's great and I think what we did was we used the science, as we all learned it in, in the ad hoc committee, uh, to be able to develop something that ex extended ourselves beyond where we were several months ago. Because I wasn't here several months ago. And it was only as I learned and talked with the other committee members that we, we worked forward, and, and even just in the recent weeks, to find ways to be able to do it. And, and I've met with the Maine Audubon people recently to see, you know, is this crazy? And, and I didn't get a, a, a crazy response. There, there, there's a lot of science involved in being able to have dogs off leash on the beach for the greatest amount of time possible. Uh, yes, you can't make it simple. Simple is no dogs off leash, April 1, dog is 31. But that wasn't going to work. Uh, I think our community asked more of us. And I think we can present a very good uh, argument to U.S. Fish and Wildlife and inland fisheries for why this should be given a chance. And let's see how we do. So I'm looking forward to those discussions. Right. That's one thing that I forgot to mention is plover protection. Um, everyone who wants, you know, plover protection is considered in this too. So um, with that, it looks like this proposal will move forward. Um, and uh, right now, um, we'll have to discuss if it um, needs to go to ordinance. Uh, I'm thinking that since we all sat down and there's no big hang-ups on this, it probably doesn't need to go to ordinance. Um, but if, the, if any of you think that it should go through ordinance, uh, Tom or Bill or no, I think anyone it, here, then, then it can be, that can be accomplished. <laughs> but, um, at this point, uh, it doesn't sound like there's a lot of um, points that are not untasteful for... We the, are a no, committee of the whole at, at this point. Right. And uh, yes, yeah. That's a good point, Bill. Yes, I, I'm just trying to keep track here. I, I see, I believe, four different, excuse me, three different ordinances being amended. Certainly the majority of the amendments will be in the Animal Control Ordinance, and that will take some time to draft. What we, Bill described right. will be quite challenging, I think, to put in understandable wording. Yes. Uh, beyond that, there, uh, what's contemplated is, I guess, an order the council would consider to create this ongoing committee. That's a further mm, kind of a correct. fourth action I consider. Right. And so with the direction I've received tonight, I can begin the process of drafting uh, and I can work right. further with you as right. to the next steps and when to have this ready for the council. Right. Uh, I don't think, I don't think there's, there's no uh, big rush on. Do you think, uh, Bill? Uh, as soon as we can put it in place, I think uh, would be very, very helpful 
to oh. the fact that uh, April's plover season. We're now early March. Mm -hmm. I think if we keep plugging, it's been a lot of work, but right. we're, I think we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. So now's the time to push. I don't mind working hard on this further. Uh, the drafting is something I'd be happy to participate in because I've done a lot of ordinance drafting. So, and it is tricky, and you have to think and rethink mm -hmm. and turn it over and look at the other side because right. it, it, there's always something. So right. We did some of that earlier, so I can yeah. see how that it's, that's still going to take some time. That's what I was thinking. So I think it's probably going to be based on how fast does it go, and then a recommendation can be made by the town manager to the chairman mm -hmm. if we're ready. It may well not be done for your next meeting. It may be right. the first meeting in April. Mm -hmm. Right, like the first, yeah, in right, April, right. In April. And then there's a, there's an adoption process, the right. first, second reading, public hearing. Hmm. Yeah, that's what I was saying. So it could no, be, I don't think it, it's not going to be ready for April. First. No, right. It would probably be, hopefully, if we could make it an April event to get it done, <coughs> that, would be, uh, that would be a very successful undertaking by all of us. Yeah, no one could accuse this town of wasting its time. Uh, we've we've moved as quickly as possible. As possible, it seems to me. Yeah, that's true. Right. Yeah, I'd like to, you know, and uh, hear input. So, I guess that will conclude the workshop. We're going to take a 10-minute break. Well, maybe nine minutes. Let's start at 7:30. Uh, okay. Good. Thank you.